Hi, this is Dan Heisman, Philly Tutor for Chess FM, and this is the Improve Your Chess video series for ICC members. In today's game, we're going to look at a game played at a 30 30 rate here on the ICC. So let's get going. White opened up d4, black played knight f6, c4, g6, knight c3. All right, so this is the turning point for whether black wants to play a Grunfeld or he wants to play a King's Indian. If he plays bishop g7, that's the King's Indian. If he plays d5, that's a Grunfeld. Black plays bishop g7, and white plays knight f3. Knight f3 is okay, of course. The main line is to set up the big center with e4. That's why you play the knight to c3 first, is to hold that square against the knight on f6 so that e4 becomes, in a sense, a threat to set up a big center. And knight f3 takes away some of white's options, but of course it can transpose into some of the main lines as well. So knight f3, black castles. There's no need to play d6 if white's not going to play e5. And of course, as Fisher showed in his games against Letelier and others, uh, you know, you can even allow white to play e5. So instead of playing e4, white plays bishop f4. Um, that's a fairly rare move against the king's Indian. It looks logical, but it's rarely played at the master level. One of the reasons it's rarely played is Black can play d6 and put enough pieces on the e5 square that, that white can't prevent e5. Right now, white's got three and black's got none, but black can get up to three as well. So if black does get the chance to play e5, then white's going to lose a tempo because he's going to have to move the bishop again. So that's one of the reasons why you don't see really strong players playing bishop f4 very much. All right, so black plays d6, which is logical, and now he should play for e5, and white plays e4. So here the computer, for instance, suggests that black should play bishop g4. The idea is to take away one of the defenders. You, you're either going to have the knight pinned so that when you play e5, the, the knight can't guard that square, or in some cases you'll give up the bishop pair and take the knight so that you can play e5 and get control of the dark squares in the center. So, for instance, in some lines, if white does kind of nothing like this, you can play a line like here. And because you're threatening the pawn here and knight here, if white just, you know, does something like this, you know, black can even, in this kind of position, might even be able to play knight d4. So... You know, the black's going to get good control of the dark squares in the center. All right, so in this game, black plays c5, which is a different way to hit the dark squares. And that's not quite as accurate because it doesn't really punish the bishop being on f4. Now the bishop on f4 looks a little bit more logical. So playing for c5, even though it's easier than playing for e5, isn't necessarily correct. And the computer said, uh, it's probably not the best way to equality. It liked bishop g4 better. All right, so white plays d5, and now we have a Benoni pawn structure instead of a King's Indian. You know, the big difference in Benoni to King's Indian in this sense being the e5 versus the c5. All right, so here, um, you know, sometimes you see people playing knight a6 and knight c7 to support their break moves on e6 and b5. Sometimes you see them playing a6 to try to get white to commit to a4 to stop b5. Instead, black plays the rather passive move, knight bd7, uh, which looks like a logical place to put the knight, but actually it doesn't support the break moves, and he's not going to go to e5, and b6 just blocks his queenside expansion. So knight bd7 is not really the right idea here. White plays bishop e2. Black plays knight h5. Well, that actually makes